Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome back to Godot Basics. The timer node is one of the most useful nodes in Godot, in my opinion. So I have my player sprite node here, and let's say I want to make my player disappear two seconds after I start my game. Well, I have a script attached to my player, and I could write some code myself to use delta and then once two seconds pass, make the player invisible, or we could use the timer node. So I'm going to right click on my player node, and I'm going to add a child node to the player, and I'm going to add this node called timer like so. Now this timer does not show up visually or anything, but it does have a few settings over here in the inspector. There are three main settings that you have to worry about. The first is wait time. This is how many seconds to wait before this timer goes off, or before the alarm clock goes off, for example. So I want to wait for two seconds. Next is one shot. If one shot is disabled, then once this timer goes off once, it'll automatically restart, and then wait another two seconds, go off again, and then automatically restart. So it'll keep going. If one shot is enabled, then the timer will wait two seconds, and it'll go off once, and then it will not automatically restart. But you can manually restart it if you need to. So I only want my timer to go off once, so I'll have that checked. And next is auto start. If you enable this, then your timer will automatically start as soon as your game starts, or as soon as the timer enters the tree. Okay, great. So our timer is going to automatically start and run for two seconds. But how do we know when this timer is done? How do we know when two seconds has elapsed? Well, if we switch to the node tab up here on our timer, you'll see under the signal tab, we have a list of signals that this node can give out. A signal is basically a message. So in this case, the timer can send a message called timeout, and then anything that wants to listen for messages from this timer can listen for this timeout message and get notified whenever it happens. So in the case of this timer node, after two seconds elapses, it's going to emit this signal called timeout right here. So we need something that's going to listen for that signal. That way we can make our player invisible. In this case, we want my script that's attached to the player to listen for that signal. To do that, we'll click on the timer and click on the signal that we want to connect. This is that timeout signal. If we double click it, it'll ask us for what script we want to listen for that signal on. In our case, I'm going to select my player node, which has my script attached. And you'll see it says we're connecting a signal from our timer node. You can then give this function any name you'd like. In this case, it gives it a default name, on timer timeout, and we'll click connect. You'll see that I'm brought directly to my script that's attached to my player, and it's automatically created this function. And it also has this icon next to it. This icon here means that this function is connected to some signal. And if we click on this green icon, it'll tell us that from our timer node, the signal timeout is connected to that function. So whenever the timer times out, this function here will run. So we can simply set the visibility of our player by setting visible equal to false, which should hide the player. So if we go ahead and run the game, our player is there, and two seconds later, the player automatically disappears. And that's the basics of the timer node and the signal. You can connect any of the signals that a node has over here on the right by simply double clicking and clicking the script that you want the function to be on that's listening for that signal. You can also connect multiple things to the same signal. So for example, if I had a second script that I wanted to listen for this timeout event, I could double click here, click the node with that script, and it would add a function to that node as well. You can also remove signal connections by right clicking here in the signals tab and clicking disconnect. And that will remove the signal. If you go into the script, that icon is no longer there and this function will now not be called automatically. I hope this helped and thanks for watching.